Hi everyone, Alexia. Thank you for actually uh, watching to this stage. And I believe uh, you guys uh, you got some insights from my previous video. So I really hope, you know, these videos are able to really, you know, whether it's to inspire you, to empower you, or probably even to remind you, you know, to actually make use of it, you know, to do well in your business, right? So I really hope this is able to add value towards your business. And of course, if there's just one takeaway that can increase your sales, increase your business, I'll be very happy. You know, and please take away whatever information you want for free. Yeah? I really believe in a continuous education. I think we learn from everywhere, right? So I think uh, we're coming to the last video of this series, which is we're entering this stage called the negotiation phrase, right? So from the negotiation phrase, we're actually leading you towards more closing. Yep. So it's a slightly longer video. I hope you guys enjoy and feel free to always reach out to me whenever needed. So you see from prospecting, reservation, marketing, all can be online. Now we're going into the most important phase. Now, what's the last stage? The last stage oh. of the real estate income chain is what we call negotiation. Okay, really guys, it's called negotiation. Don't say it's a closing first because if you don't enter this phase, you will not enter the closing phase. Okay, everything that's a process is a step-by-step -step process, okay? So only when you enter the negotiation phase, then maybe you're going to close it. Now, how do we negotiate uh, in the past? So what's the objective of, of doing a negotiation? The negotiation phase, the objective is to what? Is to handle objections. Really? No objections are, are the, the most difficult clients. You ask them, hey, do you like it or mm, like that law? Right? You want to buy or not? Mm, think about it. So if there's no objections, uh, you will not be near closing. Objections are, are steps that you know you can slowly you know, get your way into the closing. They will tell you price. Wow, well, price objection, I love it. Right? Because I know once I handle it, I close deal already. Right? Price objection, uh, uh, stay near, don't know where. Uh, all these are objections that the more objection you have the easier to close the deal, okay? So the less objection, the harder because you don't understand the client. So the more, the merrier. So usually how do we do negotiations? We talk to our client over the what? Phone, talking about price, you know, or what? Face-to-face, -face, right? So usually we do this the offline way. Okay, usually we do this the offline way. Okay, where everybody is skewed towards this, but you guys are uh, achievers, okay? So you handle objections using the phone and face to face usually is these two format okay so this is how we do offline now what about online same you are still looking to handle objections but you're going to do it on the online way okay only then it will lead to a closing so how do you do online same huh? so you have to meet on platforms like 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 zoom you really still have to meet them to negotiate the deal like that face to face Okay, try your level best. They will give you objections. Uh, try your level best to go into negotiations at this phase. Now, at this phase, you will have to make use of tools. You cannot just talk. Right? You cannot just talk like that. Maybe it, the, the skill of closing is not that high. You're going to make use of what we call data. You know, data analytics. I believe you guys have uh, uh, SRX. You know, and we also, uh, ERA also have this, uh, uh, what we call data Analyst, uh, our IERA. Go and play around with it. In the IERA app, you can draw charts. Well, this one 10 years ago, project A versus project B 10 years ago, you see one gain more, one gain less. All these kind of tools have to be there. Okay, you can make use of these tools to do negotiations towards closing. Okay, you're going to make use of these tools already. And also in the base of sales kits, you know, all this time we've been doing a lot of training, all our kits, you know, whether is it Marina one, whether is it uh, next time you're going to have wealth creation, next time whether you, know, you do our five critical factors, all these are sales kit that you have to make use of during a negotiation. If you don't make use of all these, trust me, your traditional negotiation and your closing rate will be very low. Okay, we need to support 
whatever we say. We cannot just say. We got to support with analytics and skill sales kits and also chart. So all this chart that we do for you is not for fun. Okay, it's for you to make use of it. Sit down, zoom it, page by page. Talk to them. Uh, talk to them. Don't think they, they don't want to know. Uh. They want to learn all this one. Okay, so you may listen to all this like 10 times, but to the client, right? Like three years, one time only. So they'll be very interested, you know, what you have to say, how is the market. So sales kits are very, very important. Okay. And last, as mentioned, you need to know how to use, you know, visual aids, uh, like what Joe is doing, right? Visual aids, how to actually negotiate and close a deal. How to close. Uh, Joe, what are you saying? Wow. The message I'm plugged inside until I cannot write the word closing. Uh. Gonna block. Uh. <laughs> I cannot block. Okay, oh. so, uh, so with all this smooth transition, do you believe closing can be done online? Okay, first you must believe. Okay, if you don't believe, nothing can be done. If you believe, you will try. Out of 10, I don't need to close 10. If you are good, well done. If you can close one or two, you break through that mindset. Trust me, you will be like reaching out and trying to close time. Okay, so it's always first, number one, believe. Then you will take action. Then you will get results. So today is all about your mindset. Okay, so I believe you guys cannot wait any longer. So one of the things that you can learn, okay, is to close your client online. And then the, you must frame it. For example, Mr. Client, today, would you be willing Okay, or would you want to basically profit from the panic? So, Mr. Client, would you want to profit from the panic? Would you want to make money during this particular moment? Okay, because what I'm going to show you is how you can actually profit. So, Mr. Client, if you are willing to, you know, listen, I can share with you more. You see, I, I create what? Curiosity and built up. I don't just go to the client and say, hey, client, client, uh, you can profit, no, you can profit. Why? Well, you should profit. No, we don't do that. We always create this anticipation first, okay? Do you want to profit from the current panic? Okay, so, yeah, you, you know, you must draw like Joao, you know, must draw like, like that. Profit from the panic. Gan chong, gan chong. So now, guys, then, then, <laughs> uh, then the client, <laughs> then the client will... Uh, what are you writing, ah? Okay. Huh? <laughs> uh, what are you writing? Okay, so, let's look okay. back, uh, uh, I think, uh, two days ago, Okay, I believe you guys have seen this article, right? They say half developers likely to cut prices, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we only go for the 重点, okay? Let's zoom in a bit. Uh, we go for the 重点, uh, the most important part. Okay, that's a little bit too much. We can zoom out a bit more. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, zoom we, out we, a bit more. I can't draw, I can't draw. Uh, okay. okay, we start here first, so, 54%. Yeah, so 54%, you know, survey done by the uh, NUS states that you know consumers think that there will be a price reduction of between two to five percent for new home sales okay so prices 54 percent of them expect probably around a two to five percent drop for new home sales and also around 46 percent of consumers expect a drop between five to eight percent in resale prices. Okay, so this is the market expectations of prices in the near future this year. Okay, we're just talking about this year. So in summary, this article shows that around 50% of consumers are willing to enter the market <clears throat> with a price drop of between two to eight percent. Right? Joel, you want to draw it up? So one more time. I, I can't, so I can't Mr. Write Client. It no problem, you can go back to your, you may just want to draw it back. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm just bringing it back again, sorry. Huh? Yeah. So it's a yeah. 2 to 8% somewhere here. Yeah, 2 to 8%, right? Because 2% to 8%. So that's 50% of the market, which is actually a very big market share really. Okay. Mm. So, so this is the price range that first we need to set the client to understand so that you have a gauge. Now, I also want to show with you that Mr. Client, do you know that <clears throat> regardless of market situation, regardless whether there's a pandemic, regardless whether there's a market crash, regardless of anything that's happening in the world, <clears throat> over time, okay, over time, you are actually making money. Okay, so 
just to support, you know, Joel, can I have the next uh, slide? This is a slide. <coughs> <coughs> so guys, this is the property inflation rate. <coughs> Sorry, I turned my throat. Huh? So this is the property inflation rate over the past 20 years. You can see, Mr. Klein, that over the past 20 years, regardless of SARS, regardless of financial uh, crisis, <coughs> it, prices have appreciated by approximately 5.3% every single year on average if you have a horizon of 20 years. They say, Alexa, 20 years are a bit, yeah, don't give me the old thing, like, I want the new things. Okay, so 20 years too long. Joel, can I have the shorter version? <coughs> So, okay, Mr. Klein, so if you say 20 years is too long, let's look at 10 years. On the 10 years, okay, an average property gain is 7.22%, okay, over the past, how many years? 10 years. Every year, property is going on average of 7.22%. There will be ups and downs, ups and downs, but it's still 7.22 every year. Do you want to make that money though? Right? Say, Alex, it's still too long. Right? I think we have to be very realistic. So guys, I am also very realistic. This is to show the client the, the big picture first, then we go into the small picture. So, okay, um, let's go a little bit nearer, Joel. So, okay, if you want to look at the past two years, Mr. Klein, just to let you know, okay, in year 2018, property prices appreciated by 7.9%, and in year 2019, property prices appreciated by 2.7%. So, if you do a two-year average, the property price has actually appreciated by 5 0.3 percent per year okay so this is to show you that property prices whether you change it at a band of 20 years 10 years trust me over time you will gain it's just a matter of what time and numbers right now what kind of numbers okay so these are things that you can actually speak to your clients then they say okay why am i showing you this okay first i need you to let the client know the longer the investment horizon, the lower the risk. So one more time, huh? let me convert it to their phrase. The longer your investment horizon, the lower your risk. Okay, this is what I want to establish with the client. Okay, so I repeat again, the longer your investment horizon, the lower your risk, Mr. Client. So do we invest in real estate with a short-term horizon or a long-term horizon? So Mr. Client, would you want a short-term or long-term? Okay, most of the time, people who buy property, they're either the mid to long. Seldom they'll tell you short. Okay, so this is a good phrase that you want to speak to your client because it reassures them that real estate is a mid to long-term investment. Okay, well, Joel, you're signing off initial, is it? Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, yeah. Guys, to help Joel, <laughs> can you just... Uh, 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 Joel must underline the red words, uh, make it a bit bolder. Uh, or the longer the investment horizon, the lower. Can you change the to your? No? I see copywriting. These are copywriting things that I want to change. The longer your... One more time, uh, the longer your investment horizon, the lower your risk. Uh, so when you say your, it applies to the client. Okay, so these are what we call copywriting. Okay, so, so guys, if you like this code, can you just uh, take a picture and then, uh, I don't know, you can just... Uh, pose it or keep it for reference. I'll take a snapshot of this. Okay, because this is a quote that I think uh, is important to, to all investors. Okay, the longer the horizon, the lower your risk. So Mr. Client, do you want to lower your risk? Who will tell me no one? Uh, so we have to look at the longer term horizon. So anyone learning so far? Is everybody okay now? You're for serious now. Huh? Don't say yes, uh. you all say yes, I'm sure. I close the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you took question, Alex. You took trick question, Because uh, they like to type yes, ma. Then later yes, they yes, type yes, 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 I'm sleeping. Then they, they maybe co copy themselves. paste, copy paste. <laughs> uh, wait, you because I haven't go to the finale. You know? I'm leading them to the finale, right? Now. this is how we do closing, one. You see, uh, must do chart, must do business time, must tell them quotation. Then we move into the real thing. So, Mr. Client, uh, uh, Joel, ready now, Joel. Your finger got number. Well, wow. wow, a bit too soon already. Yeah. Huh? More pain, eh? You, you got to sacrifice. Mm. You got to sacrifice for the greater, for the, good. For the greater good. Uh, huh? yes. <laughs> Guys, I am a true believer of real estate. Why? Let me ask you. 
is there any asset in Singapore that the government is willing to save? We have 91% home ownership rate. Joel, next. Why do I say 10%? Next, next. I want you to draw something. Okay. Yeah. Another way you can talk to your client, how to close your client to buy real estate. Uh, this time I got those what? REITs, uh, stocks and shares right now. You see, uh, when I'm doing this, the concern and uh, objection comes up right now. Joel, you can see all the yeah, yeah. floating, right? Wow, REITs, mm. uh, wow, stock market, uh, hey, real estate, uh, no, no, hey, can I buy other things, right? Uh, all these come out already. Now, very simple. Uh, Mr. Client, we have a 91% home ownership rate. Are there or is there any asset in Singapore that the government throws a float when you want to die already? Okay, it's what I call Singapore float. Wow, hey, it's very nice. Uh, Joel, can you draw me a float? Okay, I, I want Joel to draw me a float. I don't know how, but you're just going to draw me a float. Okay, so this is what we call a Singapore float closing. Okay, I just call it a Singapore float. Don't know what to name it really. Singapore float. So what's a Singapore float? Example, you are drowning or if you are going to drown and then the government throws in measures and what we call a float to save you. Hey, Joel, what's this? What's this? Huh? Let float, my what? Hey, The float, correct or not, guys? <laughs> Hello. Where I got float like that one? No, man, the float in the swimming pool. It's the only call name, man. You really are new. Hey, you see? New level, eh? I got support for my yeah. unicorn float there. <laughs> Whoever envisions a visualize a float like that. <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay, okay. Oh, Jin Sui, you got a supporter. Eh. So we're gonna of course. give me a new float. La. It's called the okay, Singapore okay, okay, okay. float. Okay, Singapore float. Why? Even before the market were to react, okay, the government has actually thrown a lot of measures to help local Singaporeans really. They defer our installment until the end of the year. How are we going to sink? Right now. And yesterday, you know, they actually helped developers. What, what was yesterday's new MAS ruling? They told developers that you guys have a six months extension more to sell your development. These are the float that Singapore uh, government is coming up with. Eh? The more floats are, the lesser chance of you going to profit from the panic really. Because they are basically saving our asset. Imagine tomorrow, Mr. Client, you buy your stocks and shares and then a pandemic happened. What do you think the government will do to your stocks and shares and REITs and art and wine? Right? What is the government going to do with it? They're not going to do anything. But we have proven and seen today when COVID started, before even the market reacts, the government already came up with measures you know, to save what we call homeowners, to save property prices. So that's why, Mr. Client, I have absolutely full confidence in property in Singapore, not overseas. Ah. Overseas can drop 50%, 100%, I don't care. I only care about Singapore because these are the policies in place to protect, okay, to protect our prices from falling. Uh, Joe, you want to just write protect prices from falling. You must write Singapore float, not you'll forget. Okay, oh, this is to protect, you know, uh, property prices from falling. Okay, so I don't see any asset, honestly, guys, I don't see any assets that Singapore will try to save, uh, except property. Or they won't save your stocks, they won't save your, your REITs, they won't save any of this. They only save property and your jobs, uh, maybe. Okay, so, so this is something that well, gives me even more confidence to, to go in and exercise my option. Really, really. Okay, so this is something that you can actually you know, look at. Okay, and I think up to here, are you all learning something or not? Uh, you all learning how to draw? Uh, Singapore oh, flag my flag. Singapore flag, my Singapore flag halfway, I mean, uh, you talk too fast. The mar marina barrage. <laughs> Floating in the sea. Uh. Uh, float, uh, Singapore float. Uh, your safety net, right? You, in the Singapore float. Okay, and, and I think, you know, talk is cheap, uh, but I think, uh, we want to we really, I think I should just, uh, yet, you know, two days ago, I think we had uh, one young ERA sharing. And I think uh, I want to get this person to actually share a bit of an experience of closing five deals during this COVID period. How many deals? Five. You know, do you want to learn from her? Yes, uh, yes I have. Uh, okay, good. So uh, let me promote this person to a panelist. 
Hello. Hi, Beatrice. Hi. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, good morning. Yeah, yeah. Morning. hi, hi, hi. Morning. Uh. So I think uh, Beatrice actually, uh, you know, shared that uh, she closed actually five deals during this uh, COVID period. And I think uh, we are very proud of her. Can we all give uh, Beatrice a round of applause first? Wow, congrats, congrats. Uh. Uh, Joel, can we... Can we <laughs> Joel, can you uh, save the screen and stop sharing first so that we can focus okay, on uh, Beatrice? Okay, huh? Yeah, don't you draw it enough already? Yeah. Liao, liao. Your illustration very nice already. <laughs> very uh okay, nice patron. Okay. So okay, I think uh thanks for uh, you know coming on board uh, hmm. uh, to share. So I think Beatrice, I uh, first uh, uh want to congratulate you for closing five deals. And I think uh definitely uh you have done something right. And, and to achieve these results. Uh, okay, so for those who want to hear, you know, please uh, plug in your earplugs, you know, and really understand how, you know, Beatrice actually closed five years. So Beatrice, okay, congratulations. Yes. So, so uh, you closed five years. So how, out of five deals, uh, how many were sales or rental? Two sales and three rental itself. Oh, two sales and three rental, all during this uh, COVID period. Uh. Yes, in the month of April. Okay, so was it all closed? Uh, or I believe all online, uh, yeah? Or virtually and online, yeah? Virtually, yes. Okay, so maybe you just share with us a little bit of the specifics. Let's dive deeper. Okay, maybe let's talk about one of your sales listings. So, so maybe uh, what actually what sale do you close? I close a resale listing, a penthouse listing. Oh, so it's a penthouse resale. Yes. So, uh, this client uh, did they see the place before, or when did they see the place? Okay, they see in the place in January. However, we lost contact because multiple texts, WhatsApp, phone calls, they won't answer. Yeah. Oh, so, well, okay, January, they, they see the place and then they didn't reply you, right? Now. Yes, so what correct. do you do during the, this period then, um, all okay. these months? During this period, I actually follow up. I actually text <laughs> them um, multiple times on the property market and such, but there's no answer to them until I told them that I would like to share something on property market. Then suddenly there's a text. He say, "Okay, I'm I'm ready to open to 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 hear you." You know. Okay, pause. Huh? Let, let's pause here. Let's pause. Huh? So you text them, and what and what do you say that was rejected, and what do you text that was accepted? <clears throat> okay, I text them to tell them if they are still interested in this property. Okay, and pause. Huh? So so Beatrice asked, "Are you still interested in the property?" The client just no response. Don't contact you back. Huh? So okay. there wasn't any response from that then what do you text that has respond i asked them if i could share something about the market on how uh, the market is going on in property okay yeah. so what do you share okay to make them i don't know excited or what do you do <clears throat> okay i actually share with them on the slides that you conducted on the uh, five critical strategy it's a seminar that you conducted so i share oh. on the qe on the uh, American QE on how they, the government actually pumps in unlimited QE to the uh, economy itself. So when I start sharing about the examples for China, they told me that they don't believe in communists. So I actually shift oh. the record itself, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you focus back on QE. So guys, if you don't understand what we're talking about, uh, please re-watch you know, QE, quantitative, easing you know and its impact on the market huh? so you use that to just reach out okay i think it's not just about the knowledge it's about beatrice reaching out you know using the tools and sales kit to reach out to the client did you send like my whole video like one hour for them to see no right i, I didn't i went to please ah, correct correct hang on, hang. yeah <laughs> so remember the objective is to create curiosity okay then they will engage with you if you're going to send them the whole one hour it defeats the purpose. If you send them the whole slide, it also defeats the purpose. You only send like one page, right? About three show. slides. About three slides. Three slides. Make them interested. Then they start mm. to watch. Uh. Yes. Okay, good. So guys, you must see uh, what Beatrice has been doing right. Okay, so after you send, then, then how, how? What happened then? <clears throat> I, I send them, then they ask me about uh, what do you think about the market after the COVID-19? Uh, so do you use Zoom or do you use WhatsApp or you call? Just, or you attempt. Yeah, just purely WhatsApp text because she doesn't answer my call for some reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Never mind, never mind. So we, we attempt, but they don't answer, it's okay. So we continue to WhatsApp and text. And then uh, she she kind of like got excited again, uh, right? Yes, correct. So why did she buy? Why did she buy like 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 this COVID period? What because was the main I, yeah. reason? 
I went to reaffirm her by saying that uh, for the past history during SAR times, global crisis on the uh, market, property market rebounds. So I showed them the chart and then I'll say that history will continue. So based on statistics, they actually believe it because it's all about numbers and figures. Yep. So you see, we relate to the past during SARS, the property market prices only dropped by 2.3%. See, I memorized it because I do the research. Right? So you're going to memorize. Okay, SARS prices only dropped by 2.3%. Okay, this is statistics. These are facts. Okay, this is the past. But it can, if it can give the consumer confidence, why not? Okay, so how much was the property listed? And uh, I don't know, how much was it closed eventually? You can share okay. with them. The property listed was at 3.57. Mail. Okay, 3.57 million. Uh, wow, that's a big deal. Okay. Mm, and the valuation came out to be 3.3. 3.3. Okay, then the owner want to sell 3.57. Okay. That is before the COVID price. Mm, so, well, no, after COVID price. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> COVID during, during, no, during, during COVID price. Uh, not yeah. uh, during, during. during during COVID price. So wow. uh, as a buyer agent, I went to negotiate with the seller's agent. Okay. On the prices. So he told me that the owner is willing to accept at valuation price 3.3. Okay. However, buyer yeah. offer at 2.95 mil. Wow, wait. Asking uh, 3.57. Uh, and then client offer 2.95. 2.95. 2.95. Okay, yes. so there's a before COVID, during COVID, and after COVID, uh, guys, you must remember, uh, before, during. So now we're at the during stage. Uh. So they offered 2.9 million for a 3.57. So guys, at this present moment, what will be all your natural reaction? You were like, oh, so, uh, why are you, you know, negotiate so much? Guys, this is the wrong way you should do real estate. If they offer 2.9, you should be like, Beatrice, do what? Embrace it. Of course, set the expectation right and then still make the offer. So you made the offer at 2.9, right? Yes, and what happened after that? After that, the owner rejected and he mm. came down to 3.1. Uh, 3. Oh, 3.1. Okay, so yeah. very near already. Eh? From 3.57 mm. to 3.1. So, end of the day, how much did you close it at? 3.01. Wow, 3.01. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Okay, so good. So, oh. you see, guys, 3.57 to 3.01. How much percent difference is this? Uh, Joel, can you help me mentally calculate about 15%? <laughs> It's around 15%, eh, right? Just mm. now, we only talk about 10%. Right? So these are how you can, you know, gauge mm. a client's expectation. So 15% off, is it possible? So just now, someone asked me, is it mm. realistic for a 10% off? Uh, no, we have 15% off. <laughs> Maybe one day you will see a 20%. But as mentioned, we need a script. We need a way to actually engage the client. So... Good. So well done. So uh, uh, three was the was the seller surprised or I don't know the agent surprised that you closed her. I think I How was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were surprised. Because it's like such a big gap between the valuation price and the offer. But I just told myself to just go for it. At least we tried. Like what you say, there's only two outcome. Yes and no only. Yes, yeah. only two outcome. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well done. So uh, I think it takes uh, uh, the right mindset to be able to close mm. the deal. Uh. Mm. But I think at the end of the day, if you rewind what Beatrice did right was she believed that she can close. That's why she reached out. Yes. If you don't believe you can close, you will not reach out. You just sit there at home today you know, or whatever. Just relax. And, and I think that's not the way. Right? We always have to reach out. So congratulations. I think uh, that's going to be some good money, right? Yes, thank she you. Don't, don't <laughs> that, huh? okay, good. Congrats. So what was the other sale that you've done? Uh, HDB sale. Okay, so did the client see it previously? See it before in somewhere in February. But there's a oh. lot of objection because it was a low floor unit, level three. Yeah. Then why did they buy during this period? Initially, they did not want because they also felt that the market price would, would drop. Because this area is a mature estera, that's like... Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yeah. so what was the, the, I don't know, asking price initially? Um, 630. Huh? What? 630,000 HDB? Mm. Oh, okay. So you're serving the buyer? Uh, buyer seller. Seller. Or serving the seller, 630. Yeah. So, so this uh, uh, 630, uh, is it a direct buyer that came or? COVID? Direct buyer came. Yeah. So then view the place, uh, then COVID happened, right? Then after COVID that, happened. how do you convince or what happened? 
Okay, initially they gave me a low offer, so which is very normal. They gave me a uh, five sixty, so that Wait, that's a huge difference. Six thirty to five thirty to five. Uh, mm. Yes, so normal percent, agents. No, no, six thirty. Yeah, six thirty. Ten percent, uh. Yeah, ten percent. So normal agent will ten percent. Hey, wow, <laughs> HDB ten percent. Right, if you are the seller agent, you flip the table and say, you see how I know, this kind of thing come out. But, but we have to stay composed. Okay, yeah. So they offer at uh, uh, 570. Then what happened? You then the I, went, I went to offer, but I follow uh, Kevin style. I say, mm, oh, uh, sorry, I re oh, reject oh, already. I reject already. I know it's too low oh, for you. <laughs> Before oh, I get something. Uh, <laughs> advanced technique. Advanced <laughs> technique. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, so then I, I rejected the offer. Then he said, Yeah, it's too low. Typically, seller mm. will say, It's too low. I can't accept such pricing. Negotiations, huh? Good, good. Mm. Okay. So then he told happened? me that, uh, Beatrice, if you can close at 600, I will just close. Wow. So from 630, okay. he gave me his baseline at 600. Oh, yeah. so that's how many percent off? Five. Five. Five percent. Five, huh? Okay, mm. so you close at 600,000, a buyer also willing. Lah. No, I didn't close necessarily. I closed at 580. Uh -huh. <laughs> 580, because oh. if you think there's a lot of ding dong. Oh. Oh, you want to curve for me how many times? So <laughs> you close at 580, yes. which is like a fifty thousand dollars off a six hundred and thirty, which is mm. like approximately eight percent, eight percent off. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, this is the this is the market sentiment that people are willing to enter. Okay, between the two to eight percent discount. Okay, so people are willing to enter the market at this kind of price range. So whether you're talking to the seller, whether you're talking to the buyer, I think this is a good gauge. So wow, congratulations. So uh, how do you feel then? Surprise? Or feel surprised. And then I also felt that um because of this COVID-19, right? Resale sellers are more uh, open to prices. They are more willing to be more realistic in terms of their pricing. So the COVID actually helped us. Lah, huh? Don't need to talk so much with the seller, right? Or just you want or don't want. <laughs> you want yeah, or it's don't a risk, it's a risk. Yeah. So I think well done. Uh so the rest of the uh, uh closings uh, what, what they want? Rent rentals, is it? Rental. rental, yes. Just purely sending them photos and videos and they, they took up the apartment already. Wow. Okay, yeah. so so I think uh, guys, what you can see is this whole entire process, you know, where Beatrice, where have you been? You have been at home right now. Yes. You can make money or not. Mm. Right. Okay. So Everything guys. Everything is through online platform. platform. Yeah. Everything is online. We have to get used to it. You know, uh, really, you know, digital is really to shift this whole entire model online. Okay. So I think uh, Beatrice, uh, congratulations again. Is, is there any other tips you want to share with our, you know, attendees since they are so good luck today, you know, to listen to all of us. Yeah. I felt that the mindset is very important. You need to believe that the property market will rebound because only when you start to believe, then you can pitch to your clients. Because if you yourself don't believe this, right, it's very hard for you to, to sell your products. Okay, so belief is of ultimate importance, okay? So it's our mindset, okay? So then you will be able to close, right now. Yes. Then you're able to close the client. So I think uh, well done. Uh, congratulations, uh, Beatrice. Uh, really, thank really you. thank you for your sharing. So I'm going to wrap up my uh, webinar with uh, sure. everyone ready. Okay, so yeah. thank you so much. Thank, so, uh, thank you for inviting me. Can we all thank you, Beatrice? Uh, thank, you, thank you, Beatrice. Beatrice. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Today is a session to bring all our offline work online. We have shown you the whole income chain. You can bring it online every single step. You know, So I don't think there's any friction. Yeah, I think uh, with that, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.